let us talk about our readings for today. After Jesus came back from the dead, after God took uh, his death on the cross and turned it into new life and resurrection, and through this reading promises us the forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus, he lived on the earth for 40 days and was with his disciples for 40 days. And at the end of that time, as it is written in both the Gospel of Luke and Acts, Jesus is somehow taken up to heaven. For those of you who are friends or maybe you yourselves are a bunch of nerds, some people liken this to being beamed up by Scotty during Star Trek. Some people liken this to a couple of times that we have stories in the Old Testament. The reality is we don't exactly know what it means that Jesus was taken up into heaven. Although when I hear these passages, I have a whole movie going on in my head where I see Jesus slowly rising and going up to be with God, to be one with the Father again. The disciples are standing there watching this. And sometimes I like to put myself in the place of the disciples. What must they have been thinking? They'd probably never seen anybody taken up to heaven before. Well, Jesus was alive. He did public ministry and taught for either one year or three years, depending on which gospel you read and which biblical scholar you follow and which timeline you look at. Well, Jesus was here on earth. He did all the things. He did the preaching. He did the healing. He did the teaching. He sent the disciples out, the 72 by two. He had a group of named male disciples, 12 of them who followed him around, plus some women who followed him around who aren't always named as disciples. And then Jesus disappears. He has 40 more days after his resurrection and disappears. And his parting words to his disciples are, you have been promised resurrection. You have been promised forgiveness of sins. And you are the witnesses of these things. You are the witnesses of these things. As part of working on things for today, Michael and I looked up the definition of witness in the dictionary. And the interesting thing is that it includes things like uh, being a witness to a crime and being in a court of law and giving testimony for what you have seen if you have seen a crime happen. It also included a line about when Christians tell each other about Jesus. It's not exactly what it says. It says something about when people um, tell each other about their faith or um, witness to what is in the Bible or witness to what is cool about Jesus. So if we are the witnesses to these things, if Jesus has disappeared and gone to heaven and we are the disciples who were left from the earth, if we're the witnesses, if we have watched Jesus, if we are learning from his teachings, if we are following a path and a lifestyle that makes us ever deeper into our discipleship, how is it that we are to witness? How is it that we are to tell others about this Jesus that we know? It gets really hard. Because for so many years, we were taught that witnessing to Jesus is something we do with our hands. If we live lives of service, if we are kind, if we love our neighbors as ourselves, if we go out of our way to take care of each other in our Christian community, people will want to come and hang out with us or they will ask us, why are you so nice? Why is your life so different from the non-Christian's lives? And then we get to tell them about Jesus. Unfortunately, and to much grief and consternation, 
That's not how the world works now. There are lots of people who know nothing about Jesus other than hatred and judgment and exclusion. There are lots of people who don't know anything about what it means to have your sins forgiven. There are lots of people who don't have any idea that belonging to a Christian community isn't about being perfect and having perfect behavior all the time and wearing exactly the right things or sitting in proper positions during worship. There are lots of people who don't know that being about Jesus is about knowing that you don't have to be perfect and that you are forgiven and that you get to hang out with a whole bunch of other imperfect people and we all try to make it together. We all get to worship Jesus together. And then we get to share that with others. We get to let others know what Jesus has done for us, how Jesus has made an impact in our lives. And I know for some people, they haven't actually been taught how to articulate that. I've talked to many people who say, I, I don't even know how to tell you what Jesus has done for me. I just know that, that Jesus loves me and that Jesus loves other people. But that's not a compelling witness. A compelling witness is, so I know this guy named Jesus and he saved my life multiple times. Or I know this guy named Jesus and I belong to this Christian community who are collectively disciples of Jesus. And you know what? I know God loves me because when I get sick, people from my community bring me food. I know that Jesus loves me because the people who follow Jesus take care of me when I need extra care or when I need resources that I don't have. I know that Jesus loves me because every morning I wake up and ask Jesus to guide my life. And then I know that Jesus is directing my day. I know that Jesus loves me because my life is easier when I believe in Jesus. These are compelling witnesses. These are ways of witnessing to the story of who Jesus is and how Jesus works in your life. These are the stories that draw others into being curious about a life of faith. We are the witnesses. Jesus is here on the earth inside us. Jesus is here on the earth in the Christian community and the witness that the church has to how Jesus' love saves our lives and saves our communities and how we collectively work together to share that love with the world around us. We are the witnesses of these things. We get to be the ones who witness the story. And if you look at our gospel reading for today, while we are witnessing the story, that is a piece of what we can do. But the last line I think is so important. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. We have the strength to witness to these things when we return to the temple, when we return to God in worship, when we bless God. Because really it's about what God has done for us. It's about our connection to God and the ways we can share that with others. Being witnesses is about blessing God, about worshiping, about being centered and grounded in your relationship with Jesus. And then sharing that joy and that unconditional love with others. And here's the best part about that. It also says in this scripture from Luke that repentance and forgiveness of sins are to be proclaimed in Jesus' name to all nations. We don't have to do it perfectly. We don't have to be perfect witnesses. We don't have to have everything all figured out. We don't have to never make mistakes. We just have to love ourselves and our neighbors and love Jesus because we have the promise that if we do it wrong, we get to confess, we get to be forgiven, 
and we get another chance to try again in new life and resurrection. I'm so grateful for all of you who are here today to be in the temple continually blessing God. And I hope you will leave here today trusting that you have everything you need to be the witness to these things and to a life-saving relationship with Jesus and the unconditional love that that brings to us, to our community, and to the world around us. Thanks be to God. Amen.